It took around 50 kilometers for a breakaway to form. Some riders sensing there may be a possibility of the break going all the way. The early average speed around 47 kilometers an hour. In the end, it was Ryan Gibbons and Joanne Boo who kicked off the move. Boo already in the break on stage four. And they were joined by three chasers. Yetze Boll, who got away on stage three. Bert Jan Lindemann and Magnus Kors, a winner of three stages at La Vuelta. The GC favourites jostling for position as they hit the final climb. The breakaway still had 25 seconds and Kors wasn't giving up without a fight. Magnus Court urging this tired body towards the top of this mountain. Look at Michael Matthews go, trying to repay what Bike Exchange did earlier on. Magnus Court is 330 metres now from the line. Here goes Primoz Roglic. Roglic goes. Huge attack. On the wheels, Valverde is there. Here goes Magnus Court, a huge acceleration. 150 meters to go from Magnus Court. Is he gonna do it? Roglic is hunting him down. Looks like Bagioli is also there. Magnus Court comes round the corner, sprints for the finish line. He looks around, Magnus Court wins the stage. What a climb by Magnus Court. The first stage I've won has always been in, uh, in sprints and uh... I'm very happy to, to show that I can also do it in uh, other terrains and, and from a, a breakaway finishing uh, uphill like this today. It was down in the valley that a group of six pulled away. Stage six winner Magnus Court Nielsen and Lotto Sudal's Harm van Hoeke were among those involved. There was also a trio of Team DSM riders with Michael Storer, Tymon Aronsman and Chris Hamilton all trying to keep their team in the spotlight after Roman Bardet's fall altered their ambitions. Into the final 30 k's and Lawson Craddock's rapid descent had put him out in front and the American was joined by Pavel Sivakov and Michael Storer. The trio quickly built a 40 second lead over the rest of the breakaway with the final climb of the day, the Puerto de Tibi, looming some 13 kilometers from the finish. Craddock cracked though, leaving Movistar's Carlos Verona and Lotto Sudal's Andreas Kron to close down Storer and Sivakov. And with more than four minutes in hand on the peloton, the day's winner was sure to be one of that quartet. Four kilometers from the line, Kron couldn't stand the pace, as Verona, Sivakov and Stora duelled for victory, and it was the latter who had launched the decisive attack. Here goes Michael Stora as he attacks again to try and win today's stage. Michael Storer, the young Australian from Perth, is going to sit up and enjoy the win. His first Grand Tour win, it is Michael Storer who takes stage seven. I think we really, uh, to be honest, we really dominated the stage today. I'm uh, so impressed with the guys. They were, uh, I don't think we put one step wrong today. It was uh, really an incredible team effort. We're getting some moves going on now. This is heading towards the top of the climb. Roman Varde looking for the points. Varde over the top of the, the climb. The Puerto Bozocana. And Varde takes the first set of points in the King of the Mountains. Roman Varde makes the most of that. Here he is with the breakaway on the second climb, which has some passages at 20%. The Puerto Collados de Ballesteros is a difficult three kilometers, but everyone hangs in there like Pitcock and Van Mark of Israel's startup nation. At the summit, Bardé has provisionally moved into the King of the Mountains jersey. It's an absolute grind for the riders at the back. Meanwhile, for the pure climber Bardé, he is thriving in these conditions. He's almost at the top now. Where's the gantry? It seems to take forever. He's almost there. It's right at the top. And Roman Bardé is going to make his way over the top of the climb. Quadon manages to put in a gap in the valley and arrives at the foot of the final climb with a minute's lead. A lot of effort has already been put in by the AG2R Citroen rider and now he'll have to try to hold on. Behind him three men try to counter, Zeitz, Gibbons and Navarro and a little further back the survivors of the day's breakaway. With about six kilometres to go the leader sees his advantage fade to nothing. Zeitz is almost up with him and then Bardé goes on the attack. The DSM rider will soon catch the duo before moving past them. At the top of Pico Vallecas, the race winner is Roman Bardé, his first stage win in La Vuelta, and so, so well deserved. He played it perfectly. 
Après, la tente a été longue, c'est vrai. The wait was long. I've had quite a few second places. I didn't think about that today. I just thought about the race and went flat out. It started well as I got in the break. I knew that even if I didn't win the stage, I'd take the King of the Mountains jersey. I wasn't focused on winning the stage. That worked for me as a plan. Entering the last 100k, the leading duo have a lead of about two minutes on the chase group, with the peloton four minutes back. On the Puerto de Pedro Bernardo, the second challenge of the day, the chase group blows up. Three and a half kilometers from the summit, Rafael Maika goes away from Fabio Aru, who has been struggling physically in recent days. Rafael Maika ups the tempo. He starts to go clear. Maika is going on an assault for a stage with 87 kilometers to go. Further back, the chase group reforms and Maika summits solo. Aru is already more than 30 seconds back. The chase group are two minutes down. The peloton six minutes adrift of Mica. 12 kilometers to go. 135 still remains for Rafael Mica. Reisvik doesn't manage to catch the pole, who enjoys a victory procession at the end of the stage after the final ascent. Rafael Mica is getting ready to celebrate. Rafael Maika into the finish line in El Baraco, riding for the UAE Team Emirates. This is a rider with a momentous ride across the mountains, 87.2 kilometers in the lead. Solo, he wins in El Baraco. Rafael Maika, his first win for four years. Sometimes you try and it's no easy to go to the break, but today I try all from all the start to the end. And, and actually, I don't wait for nobody today. I wanted to win the stage today. Especially I want to win for, for my father. Uh, yeah, for my father and for my two kids. I'm so happy. A group of around 20 riders got up the road with Tom Pidcock and Roman Bardet trying but failing to join them. Crucially though, the two-time stage winner Magnus Court was up there along with a teammate Lawson Craddock and nobody wanted to give the day in too much freedom. The break was down to seven riders now but they were still putting up a fantastic fight as they hit the final 15k. DSM and Bike Exchange still hammering away with Bardo putting in some big turns. The gap down to just 20 seconds with 10k to go. This one on an absolute knife edge. But in the end the magnificent seven of Court, Craddock, Bagioli, Rue, Cron, Oliveira and Simmons kept them at bay. It was up to 30 seconds with 5k remaining. Court was definitely the favourite, especially with Craddock there to lead him out. Could anybody stop the Great Dane from completing his hat-trick? 280 metres to go and it opens up first for Quinn Simmons. Here goes Quinn Simmons on his wheel is Magnus Court. Anthony Rue is on the wheels. It's going to be Magnus Court. Magnus Court being tracked now by Rue Oliveira. It's a hat-trick of wins for Magnus Court. 